Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, last week I put out my very first turning video and I turned my very first pin in that video. Now, in my video, I showed this pin press uh, that I made because when I bought my pin turning supplies, the one thing I didn't get was a pin press. Now, I know you can press the parts of a pin together using a bench vise or a clamp or even your lathe. Uh, they have some special uh, fittings that go in your lathe to use your lathe uh, to press parts together. But I wanted to go ahead and build a pin press. And I was very happy with the results as far as how it worked. It worked out very well. Now in that video I asked you guys if you wanted to uh, you know, see a how-to video on this pin press, let me know and I'd be happy to make one. And the overall response was yes, you'd like to see one. So here we are. Uh, this pin press is made from scrap wood. I made it out of oak. I think a hardwood would be best. The hardwood will stand up a lot better than a softwood such as pine or something. So uh, I, I would recommend using hardwood if you decide to build this pin press or build a pin press of your own. Um, it doesn't take a lot of wood. A uh, very little amount of wood goes into this. I went ahead and once again raided my scrap bin and this is of course way too much wood for this uh, little project but I've got some scrap pieces here and we're gonna go ahead and get into making another one. First of all for those of you who might not have saw my turning video or saw the pin press uh, this is a pin press for pressing components together uh, you know pin components when you're pin turning and it has a lever action for pressing and then it has a tail end here that's adjustable. You can just loosen this little wing nut that's on a uh, toilet flange bolt and everything. And you can slide this tail stock in or out depending on the space you need in between here uh, for the parts that you're pressing together. Now this flange bolt or toilet bolt uh, just slides back and forth in a slot that I cut in the bottom of the base here. Um, on the front here, let's turn a little bit. I just have some, I happen to have some English bridal leather in the shop and I just put a, some English bridal leather in here just to protect from marring the pin parts and everything and it worked well. I didn't put any on the uh, press arm here, uh, the plunge, let's call it the plunger, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Um, I didn't put any there but I am going to in the new one, I want to put a piece there as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, we're going to get started on the tail end of the press first because it's really the only glue up that we have to do. Uh, while this is in the clamp and the glue is drying and everything, we can be working on the other components of the press. Okay, well with the tail end in a uh, set of clamps and the glue dry, we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got all the parts for the pin press laid out here and I wanted to go over the measurements with you of each part and then we'll go and start forming and shaping them and everything. Uh, the first thing is the base and we'll set this stuff aside. The base is 3 inches wide, 21 inches long, 3 quarter inches thick. The next is the handle for the lever arm. The handle is three quarter inches thick. It's an inch and three eighths wide and it's 13 and a quarter inches long. The next piece is the little bracket that sits at the head of the press that the arm pins to and fits into. This is three quarters of an inch thick, three inches wide, and it is two and a quarter inches long. The next pieces are the linkage that uh, hooks to the arm and to the plunger. The linkage piece is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. It is an inch and seven eighths wide and it's three and three eighths inches long. After that we have the plunger. The plunger is three quarters of an inch thick, three and three eighths inches long, and it's an inch and a quarter tall. 
Now the two little guide pieces that go on both sides of the plunger to kind of keep it in line and guided, you need two of these. And these are three quarters of an inch thick, one and five sixteenths of an inch tall, and they're an inch and a quarter long. And you need two of those. Now the little piece that mounts over to kind of close off that gateway, it mounts over those two little brackets, this is a quarter inch thick. It is an inch and a quarter wide, and it's two and three eighths inches long. Now on the back end of the vise, we have our two guides. You're gonna need two of these, and they fit on both sides of the base, and then the rear slides in the middle. These two guides are three quarters of an inch thick. They are an inch and three eighths tall, one and three eighths of an inch tall, and they're seven and a quarter inches long, and you'll need two of those. And the last, now this I just pulled out of the clamps, it's the one we glued up at the beginning of the video and I haven't cut it down to its final size and stuff, but the dimensions are an inch and a half thick with the two three quarter inch pieces glued up, inch and a half thick, two inches tall, and seven and seven sixteenths of an inch in length. Okay, and that's going to be your final dimensions when everything's cut down and that will fit in between your guide okay so I need to cut this piece down and now that you have the measurements for all of the pieces I need to go ahead and start shaping them and everything and when I say shaping uh, we've got to cut our notches in our linkage on the back of our handle we're gonna have to do a little bit of shaping so uh, we have some movement area here uh, the holes and stuff that's where it's gonna be pinned we'll get to that a little bit later on the linkage, we need to uh, cut our notches and we need to round everything over. And also there is a chamfer in here uh, that allows for the handle to move and stuff. And then on the back of the plunger, we need to do a little bit of rounding over and stuff. Uh, so that's the shaping we're going to do now. And we're gonna start uh, by first, before we do any of that, we're gonna go ahead and get our notch cut in the rear of the base so that way we can get our side pieces glued and screwed on and start building this thing up we're going to start from the back forward all right so let's move over to the drill press and get this uh slot cut out okay over here at the drill press we're getting ready to drill the slot in the rear of this base now the marks for the slot from the rear 7 sixteenths of an inch seven and one quarter inches this base is three inches wide so right at the inch and a half mark we're going to drill our slot in there now what the slot is for is for at the rear of the press we have a flange bolt and we're going to be using a three and a half inch by one quarter inch flange bolt toilet bolt and this slot will allow our rear arm to slide back and forth and be able to be locked down now the flange bolt travels in a groove here and there's a recess in that uh, slot you can see that's five eighths of an inch so that way the head of our flange bolt can lock you know in there and it won't spin so when we're tightening this down or loosening it and moving it and all uh, it catches on that lip so we're going to be using two different bits the first bit we're going to cut our main slot with is a five sixteenths of an inch bit and for our second drill bit we're going to be using a five eighths Forstner bit uh, and that'll create that little recess for the head of the flange bolt to kind of catch on to. So I've got the fence set up. Let's go ahead and get that done. All right, I'm full of all kind of handy tips. So here's tip number one. Before you start drilling, make sure your fence is tightened down. <laughs> or you could end up with a little bit of a jagged line. Um, yeah, forgot to tighten my fence down. Uh, now that our slot is cut, and basically we created the slot by cutting a series, uh, you know, drilling a series of holes, and then kind of cleaning everything up. Now from here, you could, if you wanted to, take a file and uh, file your slot and just kind of smooth everything up so your bolt uh, doesn't ha get caught up on things. It's a nice smooth transition. With this main slot cut, we need to go ahead and cut the little recess that the head of our flange bolt is going to kind of catch into. 
So we need to switch out uh, to our 5 8 inch Forstner bit. The fence position and everything stays the same. Uh, so all we have to do is switch out the bit and start drilling. All right, a couple of things before we get started on this second part of this drilling. The slot or the recess for the slot for the flange bolt is going to be on the bottom side of the base. Now we're only drilling it deep enough for the head of this flange bolt to recess into and kind of catch or lock, so not very deep. Now second thing is, if you happen to be doing this by hand and you don't have a drill press, do your Forstner bit drilling first, get the little recess cut, and then follow through with your 5 16 inch bit to drill your slot all the way through the board. You'll have more control uh, that way doing the Forstner bit drilling first. Um, I've got uh, everything set up, we're ready to go for this, but I just wanted to share those little notes with you. Alright, so let's get this done. All right, one thing I'd like to note is, uh, if you notice on our slot, notice that the Forstner bit cuts are wider or further on than the edge of our slot. And that's because of the head of the toilet bowl. I want to be able to have room for the head to go so that my actual shaft of my toilet bowl goes to the far ends of my slot. Uh, I'm able to get the full distance of travel that way. Okay, so let's get back over and start putting this thing together. All right, at the tail end of the press, we're going to go ahead and add our two runners. Now, these two runners get mounted to where they are flush with the back and flush with the sides. I'm going to glue and screw them into place. Make sure that you pre-drill for those screws uh, so that way you don't break a head off. The oak is pretty hard stuff. And I'm also going to countersink the screws so they're recessed into that uh, base and that way my, my press will sit flat on the table and there won't be anything you know, making it uneven. Now once these get put into place, I'm gonna go ahead and get my tail of the press, I'm gonna get it cut down and get it fitted in there because I want it in place and to be able to use because I'm gonna push it all the way forward and it's gonna help me align all my front pieces and get everything nice and centered and stuff. So let's go ahead and get these two pieces into place and then we'll get to work on this. Okay, with the two guides glued and screwed into place and I just put two screws on the each side uh, to get these into place, I want to go ahead and focus on the tail piece. Now this tail piece is the piece that I glued up in the beginning of the video. I haven't cut it down or anything to size. Now in between here where this fits, it's going to be less than a little less than an inch and a half and our tail piece is an inch and a half so we can either sand it to fit till we have a nice slip fit and everything no play I mean just precise we can cut it down to size uh, you know till we get a nice fit but with being such a fractional margin of uh, material that needs to be moved I'm just going to use an 80 grit sandpaper and bring this down to size so it fits in there and I'm going to go ahead and cut it to my final dimensions and for my tail piece uh, once again I need to cut it to two inches tall. Make sure that I'm at uh, seven and seven sixteenths inches in length. And uh, we're gonna already have our width. We're gonna sand it down until we have a nice fit in here. And that's why I'm doing one thing at a time because we want to fit these pieces in so everything fits nicely. And once this tail piece is in and we get our hole drilled, we can get our flange bolt in there. That way we can push this all the way forward on the press and start centering up our front pieces like I said just a minute ago. So let's get over to the table saw and get this cleaned up. So now with our tail block uh, cut down to size and everything, now's the time to go ahead and fine tune this so it fits down in there. And if you notice, there's just a little bit of material that needs to be removed. So I'm going to actually sand it until I get a nice fit and that fit is a nice slip fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make those adjustments and uh, get it to fit in there nicely. 
All right, with the tailpiece sanded now and fine-tuned, I've got a nice slip fit. And uh, it's there's no play in there. It's nice and solid. So especially when this gets locked down, you know, with the wing nut and everything, it's going to be nice and rigid. Even if it's in its fully extended position, it's, you're going to get some nice pressure, you know, pressing and everything out of it. You're not going to get in a lot of play or wobble. So with that done, now I can go ahead and concentrate on drilling the hole, getting the bolt in here and getting locked down so we can go ahead and get this in a position to where we can start centering our front pieces and our plunger and everything get it all centered and glued and screwed down and then we can work on the handle all right so we know where to drill our hole for uh, our tail block went ahead and on the front I went ahead and flushed the block up with the two side rails and now on the back side I can go ahead and take a pencil and I can line both sides of my groove as well as the rear arc right at the very end uh, here And what that does let me draw the circle in and darken it up for you so you can see it it gives me a place where I need to drill my hole alright so let's get over to the drill press get that drilled and we can get rolling Okay guys, I'm taking you through this step by step in the order that uh, it should be built. That way everything is nice and centered up and you've got a nice working press. We've got our tailpiece in. Uh, we've got our bolt and our, our flange bolt and our wing nut and stuff here. You can use a regular nut if you don't happen to have a little wing nut like this or something. Uh, you can use a regular nut and washer just to kind of secure things down. Next pieces that we're working on are the link piece that's going to be connected to our plunger and the tail piece and the tail piece is the one that gets mounted on the back and it's what the handle will pin to now all we're doing on these two pieces is that we're cutting out notches just a notch here on this particular piece the notch is three quarters of an inch wide as wide as our handle stock and everything but it's an inch and seven sixteenths long okay so that's the one notch we got to do now on our linkage piece, which is this blank here that we uh, uh, are getting ready to cut on, this one is three quarters of an inch wide, and I don't know if you can see those pencil marks. Three quarters of an inch wide, however, the depth is only an inch and an eighth from both ends, okay? And that'll create that U-shaped look, and that's what we're looking for. Now, we've got some rounding over to do. We'll do that after the notches are cut. We've got a little chamfer in here that we have to make, and that's for clearance and stuff like that. So we'll do that next, but since we're going to be making our notch cuts, same procedure, same method on the table saw, we're going to do both of these pieces at the same time. Okay. 